Microtik IP IP Tunnel Microtik IP IP Tunneling implementation is RFC 2003 compliant. So it is an IP encapsulation within an IP. It will create an IP IP Tunnel interface. So this will appear as one of the Microtik interfaces. And from there, you could assign an IP address to it. Other known brands also support this protocol. This will be our topology for this video demonstration or tutorial. So we have two sites, MT Site 1 and MT Site 2. And they are connected to the internet via their own ISP. The sites have different subnets in terms of their local area network. So for site number one, you have 192.168.100.0 slash 24 subnet. And for site number two, you have 192.168.200.0 slash 24 network. Our end objective is we could establish an IP IP tunnel between site one and site two. And ultimately, we could make use of that IP IP tunnel so that our LAN in our site one will be able to communicate to the local area network of our site number two. And that communication will be via the IP IP tunnel. So we are here in our site one Microtik. And take note, we are using Microtik Router OS version 7. So our connection to the internet is via port number 1. And that is via PPPoE. So you'll see our PPPoE is riding on to the Ether1 physical interface. So we have our sample dial out, username and password. And we are connected with the running flag and we are able to see that we got the IP address from our ISP. So we have our site one LAN with an IP address of 192.168.100.1 on port number 3 and there is a corresponding DHCP server for that interface. So similarly in our site 2 router also running the same router OS version 7.5 we have our interface that is connected to the internet via PPPoE and uh, we are riding on the Ether1 with the following dial out as such that this is authenticated properly we have running and we get an IP address from our ISP. So we have our local area network interface on the following IP 192.168.200.1 that is assigned on Ether3 interface. So that is going to our site 2 switch wherein our test client is connected. It has also the HTTP server configured on that particular interface, Ether3. So as you can see, all the necessary IP address and connection are already configured. So that includes the HTTP service so that our PC clients on both sites will be able to obtain an IP address. So now when we want to build an IP IP tunnel, the site one router should be able to reach the IP address of the site two router. So meaning to say site 1 should be able to reach 200, 200, 202 while the site 2 router should also be able to reach site 1 IP address of 100, 100, 102. So we are back here in our site 1 router. So take note again, the IP address is 100, 100, 102 and we will ping the site 2 router. 1 IP and that will be 200.200.200.2 and see if we are able to reach it and yes we are able to reach that particular site 2 router so likewise in our site 2 router so it has an IP address of 200.200.200.2 so we should ping 100.100.100.2 
that will be our site one router so there is now reachability for our site routers of course via internet so now let's configure our ip ip so you go to interfaces so from the interface you find the ip tunnel and click the plus sign so let's rename the name of the tunnel so for instance we have the site ip ip tunnel and our local address so this is site number one so this will be 100.100.100.2 the remote address will be the other side so that will be 200.200.2 so to provide some form of security we will supply or input a secret for our ipsec so when this secret is specified the router adds a dynamic ipsec peer to a remote address with a pre-shared key that we will supply here and a policy with default values so by default phase 2 uses sha1 and aes128 cbc so for simplicity and for this video demonstration i'll just put a simple secret and that will be microtik so you go to unhide the password so you'll see that the ipsec secret is microtik next we will leave the settings or the default settings as it is however if we click apply or ok so if we click ok we will have an error which is couldn't add a new interface or cannot enable fast path together with ipsec yet so we have our ipsec and we have our allow fast path so for now since we would like to have the ipsec settings so we'll click ok and we will uncheck the allow fast path so click ok let's configure ip ip on site number two this time so we go to interfaces we go to ip tunnel plus sign and let's name it as the same site ip ip dash tunnel our local address this time is this routers one ip so that is 200 202 the remote address is our site one router ip address we should have the same ipsec secret that will be microtik and we will uncheck the allow fast path for this demonstration so let's click ok so from our site 2 router we could see that our site ip ip tunnel is already established with the running flag so if we click also on status so we have the link up time and we have no link downs yet so it is running so next we will assign ip address for each side of the IP IP tunnel so for site 1 that will be 172.16.1.1 and for site number 2 that will be 172.16.1.2 so we are here now in our site 1 so just to quickly verify again under interfaces IP tunnel it's running on this side so that's okay so now let's assign an IP address so we go to IP addresses so plus sign that will be 172 16 1.1 slash 30 and on our site ip ip tunnel which is the name of our ip ip tunnel interface so click apply and click ok so similarly in our site 2 router we will also assign an ip address so ip addresses so this time it will be having a different ip 172 16 1.2 slash 30 on our ip ip tunnel interface so click apply click ok let's do a test tools ping and we go advanced first for sourcing out our ping so 172 16 1.2 
so general i would like to ping 172.16 1.1 so start and yes i'm able to ping or reach the tunnel ip address so we have our two test clients one in site one and the other is in site two so obviously site one pc will carry this particular ip 1 network and so as with site number two it will carry its own subnet so let's see how could we make use of the ip ip tunnel so that site one pc will be able to reach site two pc so this is the site one pc so as you can see it obtain an IP address from our DHCP server. So let's see if we are able to reach 192.168.100.1. And yes, there is a reply. Let's see if we could reach the site to IP address 200.200.2. And yes, we are able to reach. Let's see if we could reach quadruple eight. And yes, we are able to reach. But this time, let's try if we could reach site number 2 internal IP addresses. So let's try to reach the internal IP address. So that will be ping 192.168.200.1. So this computer is on a 100. We are trying to reach the 200 network. 192.168.200.1. See if we could reach the site 1 router and it's unreachable then as for testing just to complete the testing our site 2 pc is 192.168.200.254 let's see if we could reach that particular ip 200.254 and no the network is unreachable or this pc site 1 could not reach pc site so we are in our site one router and let's make use of static route so that once our PCs in our local area network try to reach the other site, it will be via the IP IP tunnel. So let us go to IP routes and this is our main routing table and as you can see, we don't have any route going to the site to local area network. And that is going to 192.168.200.0/24 network. So let's add a route going to that network 192.168.200.0/24 will be via the next hub router, or the gateway will be 1.2, and this is the IP address on the other side of the IP IP tunnel so let's click apply or click ok and we are instructing our router that anything destined to 192.168.200.0/24 network please go to 172.16.1.2 well just to make sure you could add a network address translation rule to just simply accept that would be something like this IP firewall N80 as you can see we have a masquerade rule going to our one interface so we'll add a NAT rule and the rule will be something like this so the source address will be from this local area network 16800.0 slash 24 and if you are going to 192.168.200.0 slash 24 action please accept so don't masquerade so please accept apply ok and make it as a first rule in your network address translation rules so we are here in our site 2 router so we will practically do the same just reverse so ip routes and we don't have any routes going to 100 network so click plus sign 192.168.100.0 slash 24 network please go to the other side of the tunnel interface 172.16.1.1 click ok then well let's do that not rule as well so nat plus sign under general so source address will be the local area network 
for this router and the destination will be the site one local area network and for action we'll just click accept apply ok and let's make it the first rule in our net rule so before you jump and test it out on the pc or our clients you can actually test it in our router first so by going to tools ping and go to advance so source it with this ip 200.1 and the ping will be going to 192.168.100.1 so you are simulating that you want the ping from this ip address and going to this destination so let's click start and yes there is a reply so we have some confidence that we could try it on our client pcs so we are back in our site pcs or clients so in the left side is the site one pc so let's do a ping so remember the ip address of this is 100.254 so let's do a ping and let's try to reach the gateway of the site two and yes there is a reply so coming from our pc going to the site two router and let's ping the site 2 pc so the ip address is 192.168.200.254 so let's just replace this with 254 and yes there is a reply let's repeat our ping and this time let's see our firewall in action so our ping we could do the minus t for continuous ping ping 192.168.200.254 and you will see if we have action in our N80 bytes and packets. Again, we are not doing masquerade. We are just accepting. Or in other words, we are not doing any NAT. Here, we will see our IP IP tunnel in action. So let's hit enter. So we have a reply. And see that our packets are increasing. So we have some TX action in our tunnel interface.